In this lesson, you're going to learn guitar shell voicings. This is such an amazing approach to be able to play simple jazz guitar chords and accurately interpret literally any jazz chord from any jazz tune using as few as eight simple chord shapes. For years I've been teaching this shell voicings method and I even put the whole approach into a free PDF booklet called Any Jazz Chord. In this video we're just going to go through that method exactly as it's laid out in that PDF booklet. So if you want to get a copy and follow along you can grab it from the link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord. So imagine that you are jamming with some friends, things are sounding pretty good, you're feeling confident. Then someone pulls out the lead sheet of a jazz tune and they ask you to play the chords while they play the melody and improvise over it. You take a look and you see chords like G major nine sharp 11, C sharp minor seven flat five, F sharp seven flat nine flat 13, or B minor major nine. How would you do if that happened to you right now, if you had to play those on the spot? If your answer was not so great, then I'm excited for you because you're about to learn the simple system to be able to play any jazz chord with easy movable chord shapes with as few as eight of them. I know it sounds too good to be true. It sounds like a, an infomercial or something like that, but it's really real. So if it's real, what's the trade-off, right? There must be some sort of catch. This must be some sort of beginner method that doesn't sound legit, doesn't sound professional, but that's not the case. One of my favorite things about this is that even the best of the best guitar players, the, the super pros, they will often opt for these exact chord shapes, even when they know a bunch of other stuff, just because it's the sound they want to hear, because it's a sound that provides some clarity and some space to the music. This approach is about making sure that you have two accurate chord shapes that you can fluidly jump to for literally any chord type that exists in jazz harmony. In addition, these chord types serve as a really great foundation to later build more complex harmony on top of, such as chord extensions and alterations and substitutions and stuff like that. I'm excited for you to see how well it works. First, let's explain what shell voicings are. With all the extensions and variables and possibilities included, there are 60 plus different chord quality types that you could play. Chord qualities are like major, minor, diminished, those are qualities. So over 60 different chord quality types, but with all of them there is a an, an essential core that really defines the true essence of each chord. That essential part actually provides all the information that is really needed for any chord. In jazz harmony, these essential versions of chords are often referred to as shell voicings. Shell voicings are interpretations of chords where we only play three of the notes. Again, the essential information, which is going to be the root, the third, and the seventh of the chord very often. Also variations of that, like you could play the six instead of the seven, for example, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Playing those notes actually creates kind of a complete sound and kind of a cleaner sound and technically it's all we need. The root is the root so we need that though there are types of chords that are called rootless voicings and I'll be talking about that later in this lesson series. But the other two notes other than the root, the third and the seven, these are often referred to as guide tones because they are again that essential piece of the chord that determines, really determines the quality of the chord and determines the motion and the function of the chord. For example, without the three, you can't tell if a chord is major or minor. Without the seven, you won't be able to know if it's dominant seven or not. Without the three or the seven, chords become ambiguous and we can't really tell what actual harmony they're supposed to be representing. So with these shell voicings, we're not playing the five of chords, but that doesn't mean the five is gone. The five is actually still a part of the chord. We're just allowed to not play it. And that's actually very common in voice leading in composition. Uh, ditching the five is the first note that is okay to get rid of. And it's implied that it's still there, even though we're not playing it. Using shell voicings, we can play any of those 60 plus chord quality types that I mentioned with just a handful of three note, movable, simple, easy chord shapes by ignoring all of the information that is not totally necessary. Now, the idea of not playing all of those tasty extra notes might be a little disappointing, like the flat nine, flat 13, sharp nine, stuff like that. Uh, but don't worry, we will definitely get there. We're setting up a foundation to build on top of, and it will make adding those kinds of extensions way, way easier later. But also a very important part of this is that these chord voicings are often 
again, the desirable one. They, they allow breathing room and they allow room for the melodic material to define the harmonic quality a little more, kind of prevents us from stepping on the toes of other things that are going on in the music. For now, you can just think of all of those extra bits of information as still important and, and part of the music. They might represent what's happening in the melody. They might help an improviser uh, select a certain scale that they would play over a chord. And so all of that is still there. We're just providing this very essential uh, bed underneath everything else to happen on top of. And I would argue that especially if you're interested in playing jazz, and especially if you wanna be able to sight read chord changes, changes like in that scenario I mentioned earlier off of a lead sheet, that you really should have these chord shapes super down and be able to jump to them and, and sight read them before worrying about adding too many extra other type of chord shapes and extensions. Now, let's go over all the shapes you need, and after that, we will put it to the test on a bunch of jazz tunes. Any jazz chord can indeed be played with eight shapes, but we're gonna learn two versions of each shell voicing, so we're gonna have 16 shapes total, a version off the sixth string and a version off the fifth string. I recommend memorizing the shell voicings that are rooted off the sixth string first and then adding the fifth string chords after that to make it a little easier to move around the fretboard. That being said, we're gonna go through each chord type and I'm just gonna give you both shapes at once, sixth string and fifth string version. And just as a side note, you can definitely play shell voicings off of the fourth string and off of even the third string as well, but where they're most commonly played is off the sixth string and fifth string and having two options for each chord type is plenty. All right, shape number one is major seven. You'll see that I have the spelling of the chord, the full spelling, one, three, five, seven, and the five is included in the spelling because again, it is a part of the chord, we're just not playing it. So remember that we're not playing the five even though those spellings are there. I also have the chord symbols that often represent these chords like MAJ7 or capital M7, triangle, triangle seven, those could all mean major seven. So you have uh, that as part of the diagrams as well. And then we have our shapes. So here's the root seven and third. For all of the sixth string shapes, we're skipping the fifth string. We're not playing the fifth string. If you're strumming this, you have to make sure that's muted with one of your fingers and kind of clicks. If you're plucking, then you don't have to worry about that as much. This is G major seven. I'm gonna go over here. Root third seven, G major seven. Shape number two is major six. My last video was all about sixth chords. So this is a sixth chord without the five. Root six, three. That's our shell voicing off the fifth string. Root third sixth. That's our shell voicing. Shape number three is dominant seven. Root flat seven, three off the sixth string and root third flat seven off of the fifth string. Shape number four is minor seven, root flat seven, flat three off the sixth string. Notice that when I go to the fifth string, the top two notes just flip, root flat three, flat seven. So we had root flat seven, flat three, root flat three, flat seven. So just an interesting way to look at it. Our next chord type is minor seven, flat five. This is also called half diminished. This is its own chord type, but the difference between minor seven and half diminished is that the five is flat. So it's spelled one flat three, flat five, flat seven. We're not playing fives for shell voicing. So we get a freebie. This is still shape number four, but you use the same shape as minor seven when you are interpreting half diminished. And you see all those crazy symbols there, a circle with a line through it, or minor seven flat five, or all of those could mean this chord half diminished or minor seven flat five. So we have that same shape here, root flat seven flat three, root flat three flat seven. Shape number five is dominant seven sus four. A few videos ago, I talked about sus chords. This is a sus chord with a flat seven in it. Root, flat seven, four. The four replaced the three. This will often resolve to the normal dominant seven before it moves on, but uh, by itself also can just be hanging out. Okay, fifth string, root, four, flat seven. Shape number six, minor six. This was also in the last video, talked about minor six chords and their theory. We have the root, the six, and the flat three. That's a minor six chord. That's the mysterious spy soundtrack chord. And we have root, flat three, six, off the fifth string. Okay, we're still on shape number six because we get another freebie here. Minor six and diminished seven use the same shape, but with different spellings. So I'll show you a different chord diagram with the different spellings, but the shape is the same. Diminished is spelled one flat three, flat five, double flat seven. Don't worry about what that means right now, double flat seven, that's not what we need to get into at the moment, but just know that it's labeled as that. So we have root, double flat seven, and flat three. What used to be the six, we're now calling double flat seven. They are the same note, that's called inharmonic equivalent. Uh, root, flat three, double flat seven. So those are the same shape when you see diminished seven 
or minor 6. And again, the reason they're the same shape is because the only difference between minor 6 and diminished 7 structure-wise is the flat 5. So diminished 7 has a flat 5, minor 6 does not. We're not playing 5s, that's why we get the same shape. So now we're on shape number seven. This is minor major seven. This is a minor triad with a major seven. It's a very crunchy chord. Pretty rarely is used on its own, though it is sometimes. It's very, very often, most commonly seen in this progression. That moving progression, that it's the uh, stairway to heaven uh, sound. Triad, minor major seven, minor seven, minor six with that moving line there. So one, seven, flat three is minor major seven, or one, flat three, major seven, one, flat three, seven, off the fifth string. Shape number eight is major triad. This is down the list because it's actually pretty rare that you'll see it in a jazz tune. If you're, again, flipping through the real book and a bunch of jazz tunes, tri triads will come up just not very often. Um, they'll come up more often in more modern compositions like Pat Metheny uses a lot of triads in his compositions, but traditional jazz tunes and standards uh, very rarely use triads. So here's the shape that we want, root five, three. This time we're, we're skipping the D string or the uh, fourth string. And then the voicing off of, and then the voicing that we're thinking of as rooted off the fifth string, the root is here, but we're actually gonna play five on the bottom, five, three, root. That's just the most compatible way to play a triad uh, that combines well and actually sounds good when you're playing shell voicings around it. You don't want to be playing a bunch of shell voicings and then suddenly play this big, uh, big, bold kind of pop music triad. Uh, it's just not going to fit. So we get this nice minimal triad that is spaced apart in its own way. That's eight shapes. We have one more chord type though to address and that's minor triad. And this is just a repeat of shape number four because I want you to interpret any minor triad as minor seven in this system. That's pretty safe to do. There's maybe a very rare instance where that's not the intended um, harmony underneath where a minor triad doesn't kind of imply that a minor seven could be there, but almost always, if you see a minor triad, you are accurately representing the scale that that chord comes from by playing a minor triad, uh, sorry, minor seven shape. So we're repeating that shape, root, flat three, flat seven, root, flat seven, flat three. All right, those are all the chord types and all the shapes that we need. Pretty exciting. I mean, they're very approachable chord shapes and you really can play any tune. We're gonna put it to the test in a second. We need to first talk about what to ignore though. In order to not get hung up on all those complex chords, we need to ignore the following things. We're ignoring fives. We already know that. That's what a shell voicing is. So anything related to a five, we are ignoring. We're ignoring slash chords when you see a slash and then a letter underneath a slash. So like G7 over B is how you would call that. G7 slash B. That's a slash chord. Sometimes it's referring to an inversion of a chord. Sometimes it's it's an interesting complex poly chord or something like that. But we get to just ignore it. If you're playing with a bass player ever, they will play that bottom note always. So I even recommend specifically not playing it if someone else is going to represent that low end note that is being asked for. Even if you don't have a bass player though, and you just ignore that bottom letter, the slash chord, totally fine. You're still accurately playing a chord. What you're missing maybe is some specific melodic root movements or bass movements that are intended to happen in the progression, but you're still accurately playing the chord. It's going to fit and support the song exactly as it should. And sometimes that bottom note in a slash chord being added actually changes the sound of the harmony pr significantly, but still for our purposes here, we're just going to ignore it. You're not playing anything wrong by only playing the top part. You're just maybe missing out on adding some crunchiness that's intended uh, in the harmony, but that's totally fine. We are of course ignoring extensions. So nine, flat nine, sharp nine, 11, sharp 11, 13, flat 13, all of those, you just ignore them. You can easily learn how to add these later on top of the shell voicings and that's going to be really fun and we'll do that very soon in a couple videos from now. But something important to note here, when you see any of these extended numbers alone by themselves, uh, just a nine, like a G9, you have to pretend that it says seven. If you see just G13, you have to pretend that that says seven. So you just turn everything into seven. You see A minor 11, you pretend it says A minor seven. D9, you treat as D7. D major 13, you treat as D major seven. If those extended numbers come after a seven, like G7 flat 13 or A major seven sharp 11, that's when you just totally ignore them. You obviously just play the first part. 
All right, we are ready to put it to the test. Let's see if we can play any jazz chord that comes up with just those shapes that I just taught you. Obviously, in order to do this, we need to be able to find note names along the sixth and fifth string. If you're not comfortable with finding the notes along the sixth or fifth string, you can use this diagram that shows them for you. This exact diagram is in the PDF booklet. Grab a lead sheet for any jazz tune. A lead sheet is a version of sheet music that just shows only the melody and the chord symbols. Use whatever resource you want for finding a lead sheet. If you don't have anything, if you just Google a tune name and type in lead sheet, an image should come up for especially popular tunes, but I highly recommend using an application called iReal Pro. It's available on any device, and it's a super awesome resource that tons of jazz musicians are using all the time to access and practice along with thousands of chord progressions of tunes. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, it's just a resource that I use and recommend. So download the app, and once you download it, there's up in the left corner here, a forums tab. Click on the forums tab, and that will take you to the forums. Click on, to get jazz tunes, you can get all kinds of things, but on the top here it says jazz, you click on that, and then there should be a, here it is, jazz 1350 standards. So 1,350 standards, we're clicking on that, and then I'm gonna go up here and I uh, believe that is gonna download it for me. I'm gonna click on that. There we go. Jazz, 1,350. And then it's gonna open it in the iReal Pro app. And uh, it says import, I already have it, so I'm not gonna import, but all you gotta do is click import here. And uh, there we go. Now I have my list here. That's awesome. You're gonna have over 1,300 jazz tunes. Here's all these tunes. So now we can just click through randomly and really put this method to the test and see if any chord stumps us. Can we play any chord we find with the shapes I just taught you? This is just a tune that was pulled up here, Dancing on the Ceiling. I don't know this tune at all. Let's go ahead and say, okay, we know how to play F minor six. I find F, I'm sorry, F major six, find F, that's F six. F seven, no problem. We ignore that slash chord. Uh, B flat six, that's B flat major six, uh, C seven, A minor seven, A flat minor seven, G minor seven, C seven, they're all available to us. D seven, we ignore that flat nine, G minor seven, C seven, see it's all in here. So I'm just gonna scan for anything that's gonna throw us off. C nine sus, in the B section there we have G minor seven, and then C nine sus, so we're gonna treat it as C seven sus. We certainly have a chord for that. So C seven sus, C seven, F major seven, etc. So we don't need to go through all of them. I wanna click on a few other tunes, uh, jump around just to really put it to the test. All right, another one, C major seven, B seven, E half diminished, and that's the minor seven shape every time we see that, A seven. You see how well this works? I mean, the sound is, is exactly what we need. B flat nine is again, B flat seven. It's dominant seven, you just replace that nine with a seven. A minor seven. F sharp half diminished, that minor seven shape. It's everything we need, it really works. Okay, A flat nine sharp 11. So it takes some getting used to because you have to think of that as A flat seven and ignore that sharp 11. So A flat seven, G seven, everything's good to go. We got everything we need. Let's do another random one. I'm gonna go to a ballad because uh, ballads tend to have some, I wanna try to find some weird stuff because I want it to be challenging to make sure that this system works, right? So, oh, F minor triad. Okay, we're gonna treat that as minor seven. And like I said, you're pretty safe doing that. Uh, C seven, F minor seven, D half diminished. Okay, B flat minor seven. Okay, uh, C seven, sus flat nine. So we do the C seven sus. Uh, anything weird, we got a B flat minor six down in that section at the bottom there. So that's cool, we haven't seen that yet in our test. Okay, you get the point. We could search through that forever and we have all those chord shapes we need. Just to, just to demonstrate how it sounds with real music, I'm gonna play the chords using just those shapes to a tune, Manha de Carnival, also called Black Orpheus. I'm gonna play the melody on top of it and so we can hear it in the context of really making music. If you want to 
practice the chord changes of a, any specific tune and get it down, here are some that I recommend. Fly Me to the Moon, The Girl from Ipanema, Autumn Leaves, Dream a Little Dream of Me, My Funny Valentine. Those should all be available through iReal Pro. So now you can do it. You can play the chords of any jazz tune with just those chord shapes that we learned. Any jazz musician wanting to jam or improvise or sing, they need someone to provide the chords and the harmony underneath. Now you have what it takes to be able to do that. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. If you found this valuable, please hit that thumbs up for me. If you know anyone who plays guitar who you think might be interested in being able to do this, please share this video with them. I think you'll have a lot of fun playing songs with this method. And once you're comfortable with them, then we're ready to start actually exploring those extensions. You can't always ignore all that extra information, but we want to learn about those too and use them when we want the sound. And then we want to use the shell voicings when we want that sound. So we're following what we actually want to express and what we want to feel with the music. In the next two videos, I'm going to go over the theory of nines, elevens, and thirteens, extended chords, and how to start applying them to chords in general in the first video, and then the next video after that to specifically applying them to these shell voicings so we can uh, beef up our jazz playing and provide some thicker textures, again, when and if we want to. So don't miss those videos. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This was episode 15 of my series on how to learn guitar chords. See you in another lesson soon. Happy practicing, and thanks so much.